Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and I'm back in my 1.81 test world because I'm doing a mod spotlight today on Power Crystals Power Converters. This is a Buildcraft Industrial Craft crossover mod. It basically allows you to convert energy from Buildcraft into Industrial Craft and vice versa. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, I'm probably also going to be covering another one of um, Power Crystals mods, and that's the um, Mine Factory Reloaded. So, that won't be covered in today's episode, but you guys should know that's coming, so stay tuned to the channel to check out the Mine Factory Reloaded. But today, it's the Power Converters. One more thing I should mention about Power Converters is it's multiplayer compatible, so you can have this installed on a server. So... This mod will allow you to convert energy from Buildcraft to Industrial Craft. So let's first make an engine generator, and this takes Buildcraft power um, from an attached, you know, Buildcraft engine, and converts it into energy units. And there's three versions of this that converts different um, variants of power, and uh, they'll emit either low, medium, or high voltage. So let's build them now, shall we? Um, you're going to need a good amount of gold for these. So gold in all four corners, and you're going to need some redstone on the sides. And what goes in the middle is based on the type of machine you're building. For the lower version of it, you're going to need a bat box, you're going to need a redstone engine, and you're going to need an iron gear. And that gives you the low voltage engine generator. For the medium, you're going to need gold, MFE, and steam. And for the highest version, you're going to need diamond, an MFSU, and a combustion engine. And that'll give you your high voltage generator. Pretty spiffy. So let's place down our low voltage generator and see how it works, shall we? So I've placed down the low voltage version of this generator and hooked it up to a combustion engine with some fuel in there. Now keep in mind that combustion engines create energy based off what type of fuel is in there. And I've got fuel, so it's going to be producing the most energy. If you use oil or lava, this will be producing less. Uh, if I turn this guy on, you can see this uh, power is going to start flowing into this machine. And remember, you want to wait a few seconds here uh, to let a significant amount of energy start piling in here. And you can see we're getting, on average, 10 energy units per tick. So one combustion engine is going to generate 10 EU per tick, uh, which is equivalent to a geothermal generator um, in IC 1.23, or a uh, steam generator, a uh, coal generator in IC1335. So 10 EU per tick, pretty nice, not too shabby to be honest with you for one combustion engine. And if you're going to be going ahead and just using one or two combustion engines, the low voltage version is just fine. Of course you've got the medium voltage version, which is going to emit uh, MV current, so that's neat. So we can go ahead and flip this guy on. And again, we're still only getting 10 EU per tick, keep in mind. Um, but you're going to need to use an MV version, a medium voltage, if you're going to be producing more than 32 energy units uh, in a pulse. So if you've got, you know, four or five of these steam engines hooked up, you're producing 40 or 50 EU per tick, that's going to overload low voltage wires. So you're going to need the medium energy version. So that's pretty neat right there. And of course, you've also got the high current version, which, you know, if you're really producing a lot of EU energy using um, Buildcraft uh, engines here, you're definitely going to need to use the high voltage version. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. And those are your generators that convert build craft energy into industrial craft energy. Pretty spiffy. Next up, we've got the Energy Link machine. Now, this guy is going to do the opposite. He's going to take in energy units from industrial craft and convert them into build craft energy. Um, and it'll pump that build craft energy directly into a wooden pipe, just like an engine would. So just like normal engines, you need to hook this up to a wooden pipe, not cobble or gold. So I've got a system down here. Now this guy is actually pretty cool in that he will accept up to high voltage. So you don't have to sit there and worry too much about, um, you know, converting your voltage down to low or medium. Just plug it directly into high voltage and you're good to go. So let's plug him in. And you can see we're quickly generating a good amount of energy here, obviously because I'm connected him to high voltage, and the thing's just running along just fine. You'll also notice that once I flick this lever here and apply a redstone signal, it stopped running. So if I take this guy off, um, no redstone signal applied, it allows the energy to flow through, but with a redstone signal applied, if I did it with a torch for example, um, 
you know, once this guy uses up the energy that just came through, it's going to go ahead and shut off. And there's no interface on either of these types of machines. Um, they just really basically pass energy through. So no interfaces for them, but you really don't need one, as you can see. Next up, we've got the oil fabricator. Now we've got some advanced alloys here, a diamond gear, some TNT, and a mass fabricator. Don't ask what the TNT does. Uh, the oil fabricator will simply convert energy units directly into oil. So it basically works on the same principle as the mass fabricator in that you pump energy in and mass comes out. Well, now you pump energy in and oil comes out. Let's try it, shall we? So I've simply run and hooked up an MFSU here, 512 energy units per tick output. So a very high output machine, keep in mind. Um, it takes a lot to get up to the 512 energy units per tick level. But I'm showing you running this at a pretty high uh, current. I'm um, going to place down my oil fabricator here. And you want to hook it up to a wooden um, pipe to pump out the oil and directly into a tank. So let's go ahead and pop this guy down. You can see he does not have an interface, so right clicking on it really doesn't do much for you. And if we check with our EU reader here, you can see we're using 250 energy units per tick. So, good amount of energy required, and uh, you know, it's creating a bit of oil for us. Uh, you're basically going to get, according to the forum post, one oil bucket for 50,000 EU. So, not too bad really, 50,000 EU equaling one oil bucket, not a big deal. Um, so there you go, that's the oil fabricator for you. Now we've got another fabrication machine using a furnace and a gold gear. Again, you're going to need a mass fabricator and some advanced alloys. Uh, this is a lava fabricator. Guess what this does? Shouldn't be too big of a surprise. Hook it up to power. It's currently draining, it looks like 250 EU per tick, and it's generating lava for us. So just like the oil generator, you can generate lava. A lot of fun could probably be had with this guy. Um, and the rules are basically the same as the oil fabricator. So we all know how great the geothermal generator is, and we also know how great it is to pump lava through pipes and build craft. Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to combine the two? There is. Take a geothermal generator and combine it with a tank, and you've got the geothermal generator Mark II. This guy is a geothermal generator, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and just produce a little bit more lava here. Typically you're not going to be producing lava with EU in order to convert it back into EU, but just have some lava here. It'll be pretty straightforward. Again, you don't have a right-click interface, um, but you do have some power output here. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to hook up an MFSU. And let's start pumping out some lava, shall we? For simplicity's sake, why don't I just hook this guy up right like so? Now, as soon as the lava gets pumped in, you can see the machine turn on. And if we grab our handy-dandy EU reader, we can quickly determine how much energy is being produced by this geothermal generator. 20 EU per tick. Pretty spiffy. So, great way to pump lava directly into a geothermal generator and get EU out of it. Now, like I said, obviously you're not going to be going ahead and hooking up a lava generator to do this. It would probably be a little bit silly to do so, um, considering it. I'm not sure if it costs more energy to produce lava than it uses, but I'm pretty sure that's well balanced in this mod. You're probably going to want to go ahead and pump some lava out of the ground somewhere and use it like you would for a normal geothermal generator. This just saves you the work of having to do, you know, bucket filling or whatever else you uh, would have to finagle in order to get lava pumped directly into a geothermal generator. Now the next item is actually pretty interesting and pretty creative. It's called a water strainer. And in order to build it, you need a water mill from Industrial Craft, and a tank, and an iron waterproof pipe from Buildcraft. Let's check out what this guy does, because it's actually pretty neat and a pretty creative idea. So I've placed down my water strainer in the world here, and I've got some tanks connected to it. And you're probably looking at this saying, what's going on? And I've also got some EU wired up to the input side of an MFSU. So again, this is the input side. We're going to be producing energy with this machine. Um, First off, let's grab ourselves some oil buckets. Sure, why not? And I'm also going to grab myself some water buckets. Here they are. Boy, I am running out of inventory space, aren't I? So grab some water buckets here and some oil buckets. And I'm going to place a bunch of water on this side of the machine to pump it in. And I'm going to place some oil on this side of the machine. And what happens is, have you ever tried to pump water out of the ocean and oil? If there's an oil spawn in the middle of the ocean, 
you'll get a bunch of oil, but then sometimes you'll get water and sometimes you'll get oil, and it's a, kind of a hassle to try and pump oil out of the ocean. Well, what the water strainer does here is it allows water to come in, and any water that comes into the water strainer will immediately be converted into energy units and pumped into your MFSU. That's why we used a uh, water generator, a water mill. And any oil that comes in will automatically be pushed straight through the machine as if it weren't even there and through to the next block. So this way, if you have a pump in the middle of the ocean and you're pulling water um, and oil out at the same time, the water will get converted to EU and the oil will continue along the workway. So let's check this out, shall we? Let me just burn through this night real quick. And I'm just going to, to demonstrate this, pump the water and oil into different sides, but typically it would all be coming in through one pipe. Now the oil output needs to be exactly opposite of the side of the input. So that's the way I've got this set up here, and you don't need a wooden pipe pumping out of the machine. So let's put a bunch of water in here, and a bunch of oil in here, if I can click and aim properly. So the oil goes straight through, and the water goes in and starts producing energy units. And if I grab my EU reader here, we can see that it's producing two energy units per tick. Not too bad. So you can both use this as a water power plant to convert water into EU using a Buildcraft pump and piping. And you can also use it to filter out your water and oil and separate them. And you can see all the oil that was on this tube straight, straight through into this guy um, without any clogging of pipes because Buildcraft pipes typically don't like water and oil mixing or any liquids for that matter. Um, one other function of this machine, if you don't feel like hooking it up to power and you simply want it to filter your oil for you, you can hook up a redstone current. Just apply a redstone current to the machine, and any water that goes in here will be instantly destroyed and uh, basically ignored. So it'll destroy all the water coming in and only work to filter your oil for you. So that's only if you want, but it's an option. So that is a very ingenious machine, and I think that's going to be extremely useful to anyone who knows what it's like to pump oil out of the ocean. The next item is deceptively simple and rather ingenious. Um, look at me. I've got a jetpack. And it's a fuel power jetpack. Why don't I go fly around for a little bit and have a good old time? Alright, I've flown around for a little bit and I've used some of the fuel in the jetpack. Let's see what we can do about that, shall we? Uh, it's rather simple. Just gonna grab myself a piece of rubber. I'm gonna grab myself a cobblestone, I'm um, sorry, a wooden waterproof pipe. And I'm just gonna grab a stick. Perfect. And if I open up a crafting table and combine these three items here, I've got a jetpack fueler. A nifty little item. For safety reasons, you should probably not fill up the jetpack while it's on your back. You'll probably want it in the hot bar. And simply walk up to a tank with fuel in it and right click. And it takes some of the fuel out of the tank and refills your jetpack, as you just saw. My jetpack is now full and I can fly around again. And incidentally, if you happen to have an empty fuel can and combine it with a fuel bucket from Billcraft, you've got a filled fuel can which as you know from my industrial craft tutorials can be now placed in a generator and produce um, energy. So that is just the last two little items that this mod offers you. Um, it's a lot of fun and it just offers a different way to convert build craft and industrial craft energies. The really nice thing about this mod, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's multiplayer compatible. That's right, you can get an SMP version. Of course, it's only going to work for 1.81 at the moment because Industrial Craft is only available for 1.81, but that's probably going to change rather soon as they're working on upgrading to 1.0. So this has been Power Crystals. Um, so this has been Power Crystals Power Converters, a good way to convert Build Craft and Industrial Craft energy into each other. Hope you guys have enjoyed checking out this mod spotlight, and as always, I'll post a link to the downloads in the description of this video. And of course, stay tuned for the Mine Factory Reloaded video, which I'll be covering in another video. So take it easy.